All right, now we're going to get to the next article. Here we go. We're talking about, don't tell me it's not working. Oh, here we go. Let me see how that looks. This is on Yahoo Finance. But oh, yeah, and that last article was by SoFi. Here we go, Yahoo Finance, Afrotech section. Black investors have become the fastest growing demographic of stock buyers in America, according to a report. I wonder if we're going to get how much their return is during this time frame. Samantha Dor- Dorska, 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 January 16, 2024, two minute read. Why did I say too many read? Anyway, young black investors are taking initiative in the stock market. According to a study conducted in 2022 and now released by Aerial Investments and Charles Schwab, 68% of black respondents under 40, so essentially millennials and younger, are now investing in stocks in comparison to 57% of younger white respondents. I, what does that mean? Because... In short, even though this is 68% of black, assuming they ask the same amount of black people and same amount of white people, but if we're going to apply this 68% to all black people, you know, millennials and younger, 57% all white people, millennials and younger, it's still a significantly larger percentage of white people because there's so many more white people than black people. Oh my goodness. You're seeing topics of money and investing coming up at the dinner table slightly more among black families than they had ever before. How do you know this, Ariel Patrick? Chief Communications Officers at, at Aerial Investments told the Wall Street Journal, were you there at these dinner tables and these meetings? Were you Are you invited to the cookout? In December 2023, the Wall Street Journal disclosed a broad statistic about Americans indicating that 58% of U.S. households possess stocks in 2022, marking a 5% rise from 2019. When we're saying stocks here, are we, are we talking, and I'm asking questions like they're going to answer it. Are we talking about just like you know, tax or brokerage accounts or single stocks, which would be, you know, tax or broker account or IRA, or are we talking about in general, like investments, including 401k here, retirement plans. Based on a federal reserve survey, the data encompassed individual shares, funds, or, okay. When I tell y'all, I do not read ahead. And this is why it's so funny because for people who read ahead and they watching this, they can see that it says based on federal reserve survey that data encompass individual shares, funds, retirement managers accounts. But I do not read the articles ahead of time and I don't read ahead. So y'all can get that live reaction. Because it's including everything, which is good. If, if black, if black people are getting seeing an increase in more professional jobs, right? To the in the sense where the data is talking about how women have more degrees, uh, black women have more degrees than black men, and they're getting these professional jobs. We should see, and you know, because a lot of companies now auto enrolling you essentially into four hundred one k. We we should see an increase there. The rise of credit to the aftermath of the pandemic was shifted financial habits for Americans and led to the first investment in the stock market for some. Okay. It created a whole generation of investors. Anthony Diener, CEO of mobile brokerage Weeble U.S., said, according to the outlet, it is important to note an alarming trend reported by Aerial Investments and Charles Schwab among black and white investors. While it does not appear individuals are energized when it comes to investing, there also appears to be a lack of education surrounding those investments, according to the study. In fact, 47 percent of black investors and 45 percent of white investors reported they had invested their money in a sector where they lacked a full understanding. This is all I'm talking about. Okay, let's, what did they invest in? What was their return? Things of that nature. Also on top of that, are they continuing to invest? Okay, so they, they, you know, their first investment in the stock market. Is this all they're saying? Is this just asking, do you have, you know, money in the stock market? Is this talking about, I know they did retirement managed accounts, retirement and managed accounts, but is this getting into, you know, outside of retirement accounts where that's just kind of, automatically coming out your check, which is a good thing, but are people continuing to invest? That's what we really should want to know. Black investors also miss, because I, I mean, if you're in real estate, one wouldn't say because you own a primary, just your primary residence, you're in real estate. Obviously, by definition, you would be, but it's not like, oh yeah, I'm a real estate investor and all you guys are primary residents. I don't think the real estate people would appreciate that. Black investors also mentioned they were more likely to inform their investment decisions based on sources that are less credible. Yes, yeah, shout out to the social media scammers. Am I one of those social media scammers? No, my prices aren't high enough to scam people. Anyways, and I'm not a scammer. As a matter of fact, 33% of black investors link their investment information. I swear to God, I do not read these articles ahead of time. They link 33% of black investors link their investment interest to information found on social media. A number higher than that of white investors, which was less than 25%. See, data like this too, you know, what are the percentage of black people versus white people on social media? My guess is 
I guess this raisin doesn't play an impactor between black and white people when it comes to social media. Maybe it does. I don't know. Black people run Twitter or X, formerly known as Twitter. I know that. I don't know if black people run um, Instagram, but as they call it, black Twitter or black, I'm going to say black X. I sound crazy. Anyways, the confluence of low stock market participation, appetite for risky investment options, and alarming lack of knowledge about fundamental investing principles is a red flag about the critical need for greater investor education. Melody Hobson, co-CEO and president of Aerial Investments said in the study, yeah, rule, well, rule one of investing, don't invest in things you don't understand. So was it a third of people, no, 45 and 47%, 47% black people and 45% white people invested in money in a sector they lack understanding. So almost half of black and white people broke the rule. And I don't know if this is 50% of the 68%, 50% of the 68% or, you know, almost all the black people that invested, invested in the sector they didn't understand. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Many new young investors have never experienced market volatility like we've seen in the last couple of years. There hasn't been that much market volatility. If you if you got it, if they're saying the pandemic caused people to invest. The volatility in the market from a pandemic standpoint happened at the very beginning of the pandemic as well. They were um, they were in sync with each other. I was going to say synonymous. I don't know if synonymous is the right word. But they were in sync with each other. The market crashed. Sometime in March 2020, that's when the pandemic started. You know, officially, I guess you can say from United States United States standpoint, because talking about you know the United States stock market, they were at the exact same time. So if black people started investing during the pandemic, it wouldn't have been right at the beginning of the pandemic because nobody knew the pandemic was the pandemic at the beginning of the pandemic. That's not that's not how it worked. Um, so if you waited, the perfect time to buy was when the market dropped. So all those people got in then if they happened to invest, you know, in March 2020. They should be up crazy. Market went down last year was 2023. So 2022, the market had a negative return, but I mean, it doesn't go up every year. So I guess this is a little lack of information, but it wasn't crazy volatility. If you do, again, index funds, right? SP 500 type things, broad indexes, not, not investment advice, not a financial advising, but the stuff that the professionals recommend, they say you do, I like Warren Buffett says, you would have been good. Okay, and we have a responsibility to educate these. Who, who, I don't know, who has the responsibility to educate these new investors about the value of long term investing to build wealth and achieve financial security? I don't, I mean, you were, you're, C, you're the co CEO of Aerial Investments, an investment company slash firm. But when you say they have the responsibility, people need to be autodidactic. That's one of the issues. People rely on others to gain information. Hence, what y'all said about the social media. That That's the issue. You got to go out here and do your own research, do your own fact checking, and get as much information as possible. Before you even go see a professional, that's the one thing when I tell my clients, I tell them this is not a full time. This is not a permanent service. Eventually, I want you and you need to leave me. And for those of you who want to have, you know, do some crazy wealth building, you need to seek out a professional. And I give them the information and the credentials they need to seek out when they actually go seek a professional. All right. And again, again, like I tell you, we, we, we moving through these. This is the first episode like this. Black, because Afrotech, Yahoo Finance, black investors have become the fastest growing demographic of stock buyers in America, according to a report. Even though 47% of them said they invested in something they didn't understand, and 33% of them said they got information from social media and then that they need more education. So all this said is even though black investors are investing more, they did they did it poorly, which I guess it's better that they're investing than not investing because most people learn, you know, better by, you know, doing right instead of sitting on the sidelines, ironically, right, sideline court. But instead of, you know, just watching, a lot of people learn, you know, get, get your own bumps and bruises, even though, you know, wisdom would be learning from somebody else's mistakes. But hey, a lot of people learn like that. I've learned like that from an investing standpoint in other ways in life. So you can't knock them for that. But 33 percent on social media from an information standpoint. And then 47 percent said they invested something they didn't understand. Come on, y'all. We do got to do better. According to Full Effect Podcast, is one of the people out here is trying to help them, as I said, educate these new investors. I'm not helping educate new investors because I'm I'm not an investing professional or financial advisor. I just want to come out here and give not general information, but just the actual information, meaning like what is an index fund or what is a mutual fund or how does capital gains work? Just telling you like what stuff is and, you know, essentially reading definitions to you versus, you know, advising you're telling you what to invest in. 